Wednesday, our community, the Vincentians, the Congregation of the Mission, the priests and brothers of the Mission, along with many other members of the Vincentian family and the church, will celebrate, celebrate the feast of St. Vincent de Paul. And for us, it's a very, very special day. It's a day when we recall the life and the spirit and the legacy of St. Vincent de Paul. But we also remember on that day in recalling who Vincent de Paul was and the message that he passed on inspired by Jesus is also the message that we're called to carry on. We remember our own commitments and in particular for we who are Vincentian priests and brothers because I know that community, these are my brothers. We have come to follow in the example of St. Vincent de Paul who followed in the example of Jesus Christ. And as with all other founders and foundresses of religious communities or societies of apostolic life, their example, their teachings, their legacies are carried on by those who follow after them. These humble men and women who became saints pass on a spirit, pass on a way of looking things, looking at things, influenced by the people with whom they had encounters and by Jesus Christ himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And they pass on that spirit, they pass on that way of looking things, those ministries to those who follow after them. Men and women who say there is something about this person, there is something about his or her legacy, there is something about the message that inspired he or she that I want to make a part of my life. We name that our charism, our spirit. And Vincent passed on his spirit to those who follow after him in his example, and in truth follow after the example of Jesus Christ. For the priests and the brothers of the Congregation of the Mission, it is really contained in our constitutions and our statutes. And our charism, our spirit, the spirit of which St. Vincent passed on to us after he came to, experiencing those who are poor, those who are on the margins, recognizing the gift and the power of Christ in their midst, and after deep soul searching, is this. We are called to follow Christ, the evangelizer of the poor. We are called to follow Christ, evangelizing the poor. And we are to do this by growing in our own sense of holiness, our own deep trust and love, and recognizing Jesus Christ's presence in our lives, and to put on the spirit of Christ, to work at evangelizing the poor, most especially those who are abandoned, those who are on the margins, and to help others to do this as well, in whatever assistance we can offer in formation of the clergy or formation of the laity, to help them to participate and evangelizing and caring for the poor and for those who are on the margins. From my perspective, as a Vincentian priest, that's a very serious obligation and they're very powerful words. But this is the call that motivates we who are Vincentian priests and brothers and motivates many, many other members of this large family we call the Vincentian family. It is a service to and with those who are poor, those who are on the margins. But you know, we're not the only ones who do this. Vincentian priests and brothers are not the only ones who follow in this spirit, this charism of St. Vincent de Paul, having hearts for the poor and those who are on the margins, recognizing the need for our own growth and helping to work in collaboration with others to do that. There are many others who are part of this thing we call the Vincentian family. As a matter of fact, you are all part of this. As devotees of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as members of the Association of the Miraculous Medal, the way you come every Monday to express your faith and your love for God, to ask Mary to intercede, but also to go forth from this place, trusting that God will guide you as God guides us to care for and to serve others. Maybe your call is not as immediate to serve those who are materially or spiritually poor, but you share a call, and we all share that same call. Because in some way, shape, or form, Vincent has inspired us all in the example of Jesus, who cared for all those who were pushed aside to care for our brothers and our sisters, to care for the marginalized and the poor. And I think this spirit, this charism of Vincent, which is the charism of the Vincentian family and the charism of the Congregation of the Mission, the brothers and priests to whom I belong, is a very, very powerful one. Because I think it's one, as Vincent did, can you shape the world to help others to know that no matter who we are, no matter from where we come, we deserve dignity and respect 
and love simply because God has created us, God has made us. I'll be very honest with you. You've heard often over the past couple of months about the new evangelization and about evangelizing, helping others to come to know the gospel and the love of God. I think it's very, very difficult for a person to know that God loves he or she if he or she is hungry. If he or she doesn't know when the next meal will come for his or her children, if he or she is homeless, if he or she is not treated with respect and dignity, if he or she is, she is struggling with discrimination or racism, racism, or lives in a society that doesn't respect the dignity of life, I think it's very, very difficult for a person to come to know and to recognize that God loves he or she if he or she doesn't have their basic human needs met. And the charism, the spirit of St. Vincent and the Vincentians is simply to do that. Vincent did before he preached. Vincent lived before he asked others to do it. And what he did was, he didn't just come to people and speak to them about the love of God. He didn't come to them and just simply celebrate the sacraments and he didn't call his followers to do the same. He helped to take care of their material needs as well. If a family needed food, he helped with the others in the organization to provide that food. If a family was suffering because of discrimination or being pushed aside because they were poor, he advocated for justice for them. And only after that was done did he come to proclaim the good news of the gospel, to proclaim that Jesus loved them. The spirit and the charism that Vincent passed on to we who are his Vincentian brothers and priests was to evangelize the poor, the most abandoned, but to do that both materially and spiritually. But to be quite honest with you, I think that's a gospel charism. That's a gospel value. We as all Christians are called to do that. We are all called to care for both the material and the spiritual needs of our brothers and sisters. Sometimes that's done in very simple ways, and sometimes that's done in very profound, powerful ways. But you and I, in that spirit, in the spirit of Jesus, in the charism of St. Vincent de Paul, share that call. I'll be also honest with you, I don't think it's always easy to do that. It's not always easy to recognize where those needs are. It's not always easy to go forth and to serve our brothers and sisters because we're human. And I really think the spirit of the Vincentian Congregation of the Mission, the Vincentian family, which our gospel values offer, I think for myself, and I'd like to share them with you, five ways that we can do that. We call them our Vincentian virtues. They're ways to look at ourselves, to look at our brothers and our sisters, to look at the world, to allow the charism, the spirit of St. Vincent Paul, St. Vincent de Paul to influence us. The first is simplicity. And simplicity doesn't mean that we're weak or we're shoved aside. It means that what people see is what we are. It means that we come before people honest and open, but we also come before people recognizing that we can be ordinary and still do extraordinary things. We can live an unadorned life. We don't allow other things to get into way and in the way of our relationship with God, and people can see in who we are that there is a simple lifestyle, a simplicity about us that allows us to go forth and to give ourselves to serve God and to serve others. Who we are and what we are is evident, not because we're famous, not because we're powerful, but simply because we're simple and honest and open in a very loving and kind way. Simplicity. The second is humility. And humility doesn't mean that I always put myself down. What it means is I recognize that all good comes from God. Everything you and I have is a blessing from God. Everything you and I have is a free gift and a grace from God. And, some, and humility helps us to recognize that. It helps us to recognize our faults, but also our gifts and our talents and our goodness and to see the goodness and the talents in our brothers and our sisters. It is a communal virtue, which helps us to have great confidence in God and to recognize God's goodness in ourselves and in one another. The third is gentleness or meekness, allowing people to approach us, having a way of acting, a way of being around others that says, I am welcoming, even in the most difficult of situations. It calls us to have hearts that are open to the gospel of God Jesus Christ, and as we come to experience God's love, so do others. God loves you, God loves me, but God loves all our brothers and sisters. And it's a way of recognizing goodness in others so that others can say, here's a person I can approach. Here's a person from whom I can learn a little bit more about the love of God. The fourth is mortification or self-denial. 
And it's really a discipline. But it's not a discipline where we push ourselves away from things that are good. It's a discipline to say that the gospel, the love of God, is something important in my life. And I will make an op every opportunity I can to share that with others. It's trying not to allow those distractions of the world and of our society to push us away from that. It's a recognition that no matter how a person appears, a person has Jesus in his midst and her midst, a person is deserving of dignity and respect. It allows us to look at the values of our society and to contrast our values as people of faith and to challenge them, especially when our society demeans the dignity of other people. And the fifth and the last one is enthusiasm, a sense of zeal, an enthusiasm to serve and to care for others, an enthusiasm to proclaim the good news of the gospel, to proclaim God's love in our midst. And it doesn't have to be in profound ways. Sometimes it's simply by praying for and with one another. Sometimes it's by going out of our way to serve another. Sometimes it's simply by being present when another person has a need. Sometimes it's by speaking out against injustice or racism or in things in our society that demean the dignity of our brothers and sisters. It's being steadfast in our beliefs as followers of Jesus. In reality, these values, these virtues have probably already, already been a part of your lives. Sometimes we simply need to awaken them, to be people who are simple, to be people who are humble, to be people who are gentle and kind, to be people who have discipline in proclaiming the gospel, to be people who are enthusiastic about our faith and proclaiming the gospel to others. And to be quite honest with you, as we come together today to celebrate this, meet, this mass in this place of the Blessed Mother, Mary can stand as a tremendous example for you and for me of how we can do that. And so I therefore, it's important that you and I continue to ask her to intercede for us. Mary, who was simple, she was generous and honest and open in giving herself in a very simple, unadorned way by bringing Jesus, her son, into the world. Mary, who was humble and confident as she recognized how God had blessed her. Mary, who was gentle and approachable, especially with the followers of Jesus when they had those doubts about his resurrection and they struggled with his death before they came to believe in the resurrection. Mary, who was disciplined as she accepted her role in the history of salvation by being the mother of Jesus, even in the midst of doubts and questions. Mary, who was steadfast in her vocation as a mother, as a wife, as one who stood with those early followers of Jesus who had doubts and struggles. Mary, who was simple, humble, self gentle, self-sacrificing, and enthusiastic can be an example and an intercessor for you and for me so that we can live those same values, those same virtues in the spirit and the charism of St. Vincent de Paul. Yes, on Wednesday, Wednesday will be a very special day for myself, my brother Vincentians, and the Vincentian family. But in reality, St. Vincent and the spirit and the charism of concern and love and enthusiasm in following Jesus to evangelize the poor is something passed on to you and to me. I ask you, first of all, to pray for myself and my brother Vincentian priests and brothers that we will re remain true to the spirit of Vincent, remain true to offering our lives in evangelization and care for the poor and the marginalized. And I invite you to share that charism with us in your goodness and your kindness. Thank you for listening.